Now, probability is the study of the likelihood that something will occur. Now, probability can come to you in the form of a fraction or a decimal or sometimes a percent. Now, let's talk about an example of a probability. Something real easy that you probably use every day, a coin. If I were to ask you to flip a coin, what would be the probability that of that one flip you would get a heads? Well, since there's one head on two sides of the coin, your probability of getting a head would be one out of two. All right, now, for that one flip, it would be one out of two. But if I asked you to do it over and over and over and over again, does that mean that half the time you would get a heads and half the time you would get a tails? Well, maybe theoretically we should, but experimentally, that's probably not gonna happen if we did it. Now, let's do this in a tastier experiment. What if I had a huge bowl of chocolate sitting in front of me, and I were to ask my daughter Ellie to pull out a chocolate at random, what would be the probability that she would pull out a blue piece of chocolate? Well, let's try it. Let's see how many it takes for her to get to a blue. All right, go ahead, Ellie. All right, well, the first one's red, so she has to eat that one. What about the second one? Don't look. Wow, what are the odds of that? That would be another probability. Two reds, all right, let's do another one. And that time she got a blue. All right, so you can have that one. So does that mean that one out of three would be a blue for everybody that came up to this bowl? See, no, that happened for her one experiment, but I bet if we did it again, it wouldn't be one out of three again for her. It would probably be one out of seven or something like that. So that what we just did was a simple experiment based on a small sample. If I wanna know the theoretical probability though of her picking out a blue, I need to know two things. How many blue chocolates are here and how many total chocolates are here? And to find the probability of blue, I simply take how many total blue divided by the total in the bowl, and that would be the probability of getting a blue. All right, now we're gonna try that, but I need some help counting all of this. So I'm gonna give this whole bowl to Ellie, and she and some of her friends are gonna put this into individual little bags, and they're gonna count it for us so that we don't have to do all of that work. All right, Ellie, go ahead and get them started once you have all of that divvied up. All right, now, if you want to participate in this experiment, you guys just need to go get your own three bags of your favorite candy-coated chocolate. And then what you do is one bag at a time, we are going to do what the kids are going to do. All right, this will be a fun experiment, and you get to eat all of the data when we're finished. So let's see how close we are to what happens in real life. All right, guys, go ahead and get started. Now, as you can see, they are very busy counting all of my chocolate. Now, while they're doing that, let me explain to you what's going to happen and how you can also participate in this experiment. They are taking one bag at a time, dumping them out, putting them in color-coded piles, counting how many of each color are in that one particular bag, and then writing their data into the color chart. Now, you too can download that same color chart in a PDF form and then print it off. Take an individual bag of your favorite color-coded chocolates and then count them individually bag by bag and enter your data as well. Now, the manufacturer says that we should have certain percentages in each bag. They say that we should have about 30% brown, we should have about 20% red, 20% yellow, and the remaining three colors, blue, green, and orange, should be about 10% of the bag. So, individually, 10%. Now, what I want you to do if you're participating is fill in your color code chart and then bag by bag, see how close or how far off you are from those percentages. Do you have 30% brown or do you have more or less? And do that for each color. I think you'll be surprised that individual bags are not going to actually follow those percentages. But then what we're gonna all do is put all of our data together, my kids and yours. And when you put all of the data together and now we have a bigger sample, let's see if we can get closer to those percentages. Well, the results are in and here you can see our data. Now, if you look all the way across, the totals look pretty good. But if we looked at just individual people, that doesn't look so good. If you just look at one person and how many brown and red and yellow candies they had, that doesn't match up to the percentages that we had hoped for. But as you can see, the more data that we collected, the bigger sample we collected, the better our results turned out. That's key when you're doing statistics. Don't just go after a very small sample. 
Go and get as many examples as you can, therefore you can have a better result in the end. Now, notice our blue, because we talked about Ellie trying to pick a blue candy out of this total bowl. We found that we had 167 blue candies out of 1,564 total candies. Do you know what percent that is? That is 10.68%. Now, what was the manufacturer's goal for blue? 10%. We were almost there. Now, your results are probably a lot further off than ours, right? Because you only had three bags of candy compared to our many. So what could you do to make yours better? Take our data and add it to yours. Now, if you combine all of it, sum them together and find the percentages, I bet you're gonna be surprised at how close you come again. This is a really fun experiment. I am very excited for you to get started. In fact, I think I'm gonna get started on this bowl right now.